fun. All right, everybody. Happy Friday. What is it? Is it day 9001 of sheltering in place? Something like that, Ricardo? Or does it just feel that way? It feels that way. Absolutely. Man, yesterday I was saying that I feel like I'm wearing an ankle bracelet. That I committed a crime I wasn't aware of. I must have been sleepwalking or something. Sheltering in place. It's been pretty interesting, though. It's been pretty interesting to sit back and reflect and think about just life in general. Well, right. I mean, one of the things about sheltering in place is that you're also sheltering in place with your own brain. Right. I know I'm doing a lot of introspection. I'm thinking, yeah. rethinking, re-strategizing, re-engineering both my personal and my business life. Right. And I believe that coming out of this, one of the silver linings is that we're going to come out better, man. Better people, more focused, yeah. more focused on the right things. Right. 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 Oh, yeah. Because now, now you're thinking of all the things that you've done to get to this point of life and you're wondering – are those the things that I should continue doing that I even wanted to do? And yeah. So realize a lot of our programming, right? right? There's a lot of programming that goes into our lives that we don't notice, whether it comes from friends, family, you're right. What have you. And we've been so separated social, from everybody. Social programming. Yeah. But now it's like, whoa, I, I see a whole new side of myself as well. I think. Right. And you realize that you were doing this, uh, you know, at some stages of your life, you're, everything became kind of robotic. Exactly. Uh, so exactly. everybody, this is this is a, an absolute treat for me to have uh, Ricardo Archila here because not only is he a a real estate broker, also a real estate investor, but he's yeah. a dear I'm not friend. A broker yet. Oh, you're not a broker yet. No, See, I'm, broker yet. I'm already thinking, right? I'm already putting <laughs> yeah, you. In that. Good head. But you've been in the real estate business a very long time and soon to be broker. Look, yeah. I'm putting the pressure on him. <laughs> but this man has. Uh, He's one of the brightest people I know, honest, quite honestly. And he's so ingrained into the community, very ingrained into the industry. You know, some, some practitioners, that's what they do. They buy and sell real estate, right? They help people buy and sell real estate. But this guest, Ricardo, is also an industry leader. He's very involved in the political and in the action-oriented uh, segment of the real estate industry, which gives him quite frankly, a wider lens and a greater perspective on what's going on in real estate. So thank you so much, Ricardo, for, yeah, for joining me today, man. I'm excited for this interview because we're going to have a very at-large, bigger picture uh, conversation today. So tell me what you're seeing out there, because you talk to a lot of people. You, like I, man, we interact with a lot of people out there. What are what are some of the kind of common themes that you're seeing both in the psychology of the person coming to you? Or have you started to see like profiles two or three different types of people that are emerging out of your conversations and what, what are your thoughts about what people are saying to you and asking you yeah I think it's, it's pretty interesting I think a lot a lot of people right well there's there's like you said maybe two or three types of people there's those that already had a plan in place they already knew where they were going they knew where where they wanted to be and okay. so those are taking action no matter what and, and in general, that's, that's always the case. There's people that just know exactly what the doers and they're just going to do it. And they're, they're either buying, selling or, or whatever they're doing. Yeah. Then, then you have that one group that's kind of just sitting there saying, what's going to happen? I, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't want to do anything yet because I, I, I'm still don't know if I'm going to go back to work. I don't know when I'm going to go back to work uh, or what's going to happen. So I'm just watching. Yeah. And then there's your group. That's just the doom and gloom. And so they're just, they're just at the sidelines, just watching, waiting, talking everything down and, and hoping that everything is going to drop. And from what I'm seeing so far, uh, I mean, the numbers show that, that we have a huge unemployment rate. Yes, we 30 have, million. Uh, real estate sales have dropped, but I, I don't think they've dropped in the sense of prices going down. They've just dropped because sellers are pulling back, waiting to see what's going to happen. And the people selling right now are those that either have to because they just got a job promotion out of state. Uh, they were already planning on moving, like I said earlier. So that's what's on the market. And things are still moving. I mean, we're, we're taking two to three weeks in the peninsula. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but they're still churning. I haven't seen major price drops. Or I have seen a little bit of price drops have been we're fixer-uppers. So oh. sellers are getting kind of a reality check now. So uh -huh. even pre-COVID, we were already kind of starting to feel that a little bit where yeah. sellers were saying, you know what? I could list my house for 1.2 and I'm gonna get 1.3, regardless of the condition. So sellers were pricing at 1.25, thinking they're gonna get that 1.3. Uh, greed is real, right? Yeah, the greed was there. 
And so those were starting to turn back. So we were having a correction, not in the sense of prices going down, just leveling off, which is what I think COVID will push. It'll push us to level off for a while. Will prices drop? I mean, they're bound to drop at some point, right? Nothing keeps going up forever. Yeah. How fast and how low, that's kind of to be seen. Yeah. And what people forget, the last market, it took six years for us to hit bottom. I mean, we didn't, we didn't just go to bottom all of a sudden. It, it took six years for it to get there. And the last time, it was a real estate issue. It was a, it was a mortgage issue. Yes. Now it's, it's, it has nothing to do with mortgages. It's a pandemic oh. that brought yeah. a stall, not just to real estate, but markets overall. And so it'll be really interesting to see once uh, COVID and we're kind of open the economy back to see how much people go back to work, um, how, many, how many deaths really happened because of COVID, because there's a lot of that are, are happening that are COVID induced in the sense that people had other illnesses. Yeah. You know? And so I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist, but there are different numbers and things that are kind of showing where the numbers could be worse than what we think, or they could be better than what we think. And if they're better, I think the economy is going to start turning a lot faster. And I think people are eager to move. I mean, people are excited for the last five, six years. We've seen people leaving California just in general. And so now I think we're talking, we were even talking about this earlier. A lot of companies are realizing they don't need the office space. Right? People are working more remotely more than ever. And in the last five, six years too, we're seeing VCs go out of the state to fund ventures outside of California. Yeah, so Austin, Texas. Exactly. We're seeing Boise, Idaho's. Absolutely. Nevada, all of a sudden, here it comes, right? Right. So we're seeing companies transition into areas outside of California, and they're making wages similar to California or higher than where they're at. So people are either deciding not to come to California or to leave California and buy all cash and live a better lifestyle. So it, it'll be interesting to watch in the next couple of weeks. I think we need, we'll need a couple of months to kind of see the adjustment of where things are going. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, I mean, you could you could attest to this. Rates are so low right now. <laughs> Artificially, thank you can thank the Fed for that, right. and they're going to remain that way. I mean, they've made a commitment for long term because they know that the economic recovery is not going to be most likely a V-shaped recovery. It's going to be more U-shaped, right? So right. it's going to take Absolutely. some time. And let's be honest, real estate, which is another great thing about real estate, it's one of the anchors, one of the main, if not the biggest anchor to economic prosperity. You got to right. live somewhere. Right. Absolutely. You always, you always have to live somewhere. That's true. Yeah. You're yeah. either paying a mortgage or paying somebody else's. Exactly. And with rates being as they are, you know, it's, it's crazy. Rents and mortgages are just about the same in many areas of the Bay Area. You know, maybe I see in the it. they're a little bit more expensive, but in the East Bay or further, people are paying sometimes even less than what they're paying in rent. And, and by the way, just to interrupt you for a second, that's not even taking into consideration that you cannot compare a mortgage payment with a rent payment because with the rent payment, you have zero tax deductibility, right. you have zero capital gains because you don't own anything. Therefore, you have zero equity participation right. and you have all that when you're paying a mortgage payment. So it's not apples to apples. Right. Exactly, exactly. So, so yeah, I think, I mean, I think it's a great time to buy. If you're looking yeah. to buy, um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of good opportunities. We're starting to see some more fixer uppers come out. So inventory that's been sitting for the last six or seven years, people were holding on tight because they were winning for the top of the market. I think people are now starting to feel that, that we're kind of at that level or we're getting there. Um, and, and I think it'll be healthy. I mean, we need the churn, we need the transition. Yeah. And once inventory starts coming out, we start getting more buyers. I think I was reading something yesterday that Mortgage Association said April was the highest applications of mortgages. Yes. So that means we have a flood of buyers coming in and we still don't have the inventory. Yep. We still have, we still have pent up demand and unfortunately uh, not as much inventory as we're going to need. And by the way, this is nothing new guys. Right. We've had inventory issues for a long time because yeah. even though we paint the picture that yes, it's true. A million more people left the state of California last year in 2019 19 than came in. Right. We still have an inventory problem. There's pent up. And I personally think that one of the things that's going to happen post-COVID or PC here is going to be a renewed interest and appreciation 
for real estate as an investment, whether it's going to be your primary residence or not. Because, you know, there's a lot of pundits out there that say, well, if you're buying a primary residence, that's not really an investment. Right. Uh, have you ever heard what's called the capital gains exemption, where you can exempt if you're single $250,000 of gains or 500000 if you're married without paying a penny in taxes? Can somebody please tell me what other other instrument we'll call it that some people don't call an investment that you can sleep in, get a tax deduction and gain up to $500,000 in gains without paying, right. in, without paying, paying taxes. And you get to sleep in it. If somebody right. could please tell me a, one single other investment that has those attributes, exactly. I want to hear about it. Exactly. Right? I'm, I'm kind of curious about too. I haven't read much about this, but I kind of want to start looking into it is, is the age groups and the psychology behind that, right? Mm. You know, the, a lot of the, the boomers, which is where a lot of the inventory is right now, they were the, let me hold on to things, right? And they held on, they held on tight. They saved, they, they did all that. Then, then um, just moving fast forward real quick, you had the, the millennials like me, right? They, they wanted that whole transition, the whole city life, we want to move yeah. around. But yeah. now you're getting the, the, the younger buyers in their late 20s going into their 30s that think a lot different. They're, they're, they're putting their roots in. They, they want roots. They're growing cool. up. <laughs> they're growing up. Yeah. And they're growing up in a different, in a different environment where a lot of the, the previous generation saw their parents lose their homes. Mm, 2008. Right. Yeah. So that was a scary time for a lot of them. Yes. You're right. Another group saw their parents go up with the market because they were buying 2009, 10. At 40 11. cents on the dollar. Exactly. Uh, 60, exactly. right? So even that is a different mindset and a different mentality. So it'll be really interesting. I'm curious to see how that's going to change um, the real estate market and the type of buyers that we get as well. Well, here's the other thing too that I was thinking about, Ricardo, is think about all the people that are sheltering in place in high-rise condos. Right. Whoa, dude. I mean, right. no matter what, I mean, the six feet distance, you're probably violating it seven times a day exactly. without wanting to. What are you going to do? You got to get in an elevator. You got to go through a long hallway, right? Mm -hmm. I think there's going to be a transition. Mm -hmm. out of the condo market and going back into single family residences for all the reasons, not just because of the six foot distancing, but or social distancing, but also about they're going to realize that man sheltering in place in this small condo. I need more space, man. I want a backyard. I want to be able to breathe because people are still doing barbecues. You can't, yeah. you can't do that if you're in your yeah. unit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, right? you're seeing places like, like uh, New York and other places, people are just moving into more rural areas. That's right. So, I mean, it's already happening. It's starting, it's starting to transition yep. in that sense. How, yep. how long and how, how vast is that going to be? We don't know yet, but we're seeing patterns and we're starting to see where people are fluctuating and their living patterns are going to change. You're right. And, and I'm going to see, we're going to see migrations into the peninsula. We're going to see people going into Marin. Right. Man, and that's happening already. My understanding is a lot of San Franciscans are moving to the peninsula and Marin like right now. Right. Right. They're the ones that are saying, you know what, I, I, I'm done with this. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, we've been having a lot too before, before COVID going into Oakland, right? Because it was cheaper. Oh, yeah. So yeah. You, were, you, were, you, were having, you were having a lot of that transition. So that transition was already there. I think COVID slowed it down. But once, once things start rolling again, we're going to see a lot of people coming out ready to, to make those moves. That I agree. Holding on to. I agree. Hey, a little birdie told me that somebody's uh, starting – this uh, re real estate investment trust. Uh, do you yes. happen to know of anybody <laughs> that I might be talking about? Yes. yes. Tell so me about this, man. This is exciting stuff. You know, I'm an ex uh, licensed or securities licensed financial advisor. So when I hear stuff like oh, this, nice. I go, er, you know, I perk up. Tell me about it. Yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm, look, I'm working on on building a REIT. We've we've built the structure already. Uh, it's called Realty Share. Uh, oh, we're gonna cool. start. We're we're gonna evolve into a, a crowdfunding uh, platform. Uh, probably in phase two or three, but we're looking at flight California cities, Texas, Reno, um, uh, what do you call it? the L, um, Seattle, Washington, yeah, okay. that, whole, yep. that whole L. I think there's a lot of good opportunity. A lot of hmm. Californians are starting to move into those neighborhoods, into those areas, drive prices up. Plus, there's a lot of just, just um, those cities are, are, have a lot of opportunity zones. Yeah, okay. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Very tax, tax favorable. Exactly. And rental in, rentals are starting to go up in price hmm. right? because now you're getting California people. Uh, there it goes. Used to paying the higher rents yep. to areas where rent was maybe, I'm making this number up, but rent was $1,200. Californians are willing to pay 
16 for nicer finishes. So guess what it goes to? 16. 16 sorry, quickly. Norm, right. And so, uh, so I think there's going to be a lot of great opportunity, very similar to California. You know, and any markets that, that go down or when there's um, issues, everybody shifts down, right? So your $4 million group goes down to the $2 million group, your $2 million and so, so on. So yep. even Reno's, Austin's, you're seeing people transition from there into cheaper markets, right? Because they're retiring, they're retiring as well. They're moving. Uh, and so their, their income level is, is allows them to move or shift to maybe Idaho or maybe, I, I don't know, it's just areas that are, are less expensive for them. Um, they go into the rural towns of Georgia. I have a friend that moved out there to Georgia. You know, mm -hmm. they, they sold their house in Martinez, moved out to those areas, they got bigger land. So there's that transition oh, yeah. always happens, right? So I, I think a lot of opportunity is going to be there to buy those properties that are still the fixer uppers, uh, original homes. And there's also a lot of areas that are starting to get redeveloped specifically in Reno where they're allowing, they need the housing. So yeah. there's a lot of the old lots, you know, Reno's very old where you still have a lot of those homes that sit on that 6,000, 7,000 lot Gigantic that Reno lot. is allowing to convert into a duplex, triplex, even mm, fourplex. Higher density living. Exactly. So you buy, you buy the corridor of growth right now, you, you rent out as a, as a single family, and then you can start transitioning later into, into bigger units. So I think the cash flow is going to be there. I think the opportunity is going to be there. And the prices are right. I mean, you can't, where, where else can you buy something for $450 in, in a growing neighborhood that's, that's up and coming and has a lot of structure to it already? Yeah, and it has a ton of upside. Wow. Cool. When is that going to be available? Your REIT. So I'm still working on some some paperwork and some legality yeah, issues. The due that, diligence that part. Right. So I'm hoping I should be able to launch by next month. That's my goal. Oh, wow. That's fast, man. Yeah. By next okay. Month, so, so June. All right. Yeah, cool. We'll have to do another uh, video. Yeah. We'll yeah. About that one in detail. It when is it's July, but month. I'm excited. And I look Dude, I'm excited for you. Absolutely. And we'll get the word out because uh, I know you and I know that you are a person who measures twice and cuts once. I was doing the right thing and dotting your I's and crossing your T's. Excellent. So how do people get a hold of you now, Ricardo? Uh, they can email me or call me. My phone number is 650-438-1562 or um, myagent at ricardoarchila.com. And it's A-R-C-H-I-L-A. I-L-A, yes. All right. Very good. Well, thank you so much again, man, for all thank your you. wisdom and your insight and the opportunities. Uh, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay indoors. Awesome. Thank you. All right, everybody. Uh, Thank you. By the way, everybody, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And to the right of that, you have this little bell. If you don't press that bell, I can't alert you when I'm dropping the next video. So make sure to hit that as well. Have a great day, everyone. All right. Take care. Bye.